The head has been stripped as far as I want it for the job that I want uh, for the machinist to do. There's nothing else in here for me to remove. You can see how piston number one was burning a lot of oil, pushing oil up. All the other ones look normal, normal wear. We have everything removed up here. Everything removed over here. Everything removed from the bottom. And one more time, the block is fully stripped. Now I'm ready to send this to the machinist. And the next update, you're going to see me reinstalling everything. One thing I'm going to do that's not, I'm not gonna show it here in the video, is cleaning. Cleaning all the old RTV, all the old oil, everything that's uh, that used to be there that I don't want it to be there no more. I'm going to talk about the method I'm going to do. You're going to use your method as you wish. Now, all this stuff, I can hit it with a blade if I want to be here for the next five years. But what I'm going to do is put a, a uh, brass uh, wire wheel onto my drill and drill away. It's going to clean off all that RTV. Brass is softer than aluminum, so it will not damage the aluminum. I will have to do that with just about everything. Nothing up here on the head, but mostly on the block where all the old RTV is. And I'm going to have to invest on a bunch of brake cleaner as well for whatever the machine is did not clean, because he's gonna hot tank. Uh, the block but uh, I'm going to see if I can clean it some further because once this engine is put back in the engine bay I'm sure the customer will not just want to rebuild engine although that's his main concern he would also would like to see a clean looking rebuilt engine and what I'm going to do off camera as well is remove these dowel pins and I would uh, suggest one more time, if you remove them and they get damaged, just order some new ones. And uh, if, you, if you pull them out and they come out good, then by all means reuse them. The block is back from the machine shop. I'm just going to give you a quick tour. It did not need to get overboard. A home fix all the problems I mic'd it and it came out within spec uh, if I remember correctly it was came out to be 3.485 uh, just about all the way around and the limit is 3.489 so that brings me within spec the block is back from the machine shop. It did not need to get overboard, it just got honed. At, uh, all the measurements came out to be 3.485, so that's uh, good with spec. You can see it also got hot tanked, and I went ahead and uh, just give it a coat of Aluma Seal. Uh, if you saw the previous videos, you can see how this. Uh, the front case or the timing chain area had that impregnated oil came out uh, back to bare aluminum nicely just panning out all the way through Let's see if I can uh, flip this one handed here so you can see the top alright there you go Okay, so now I'm going to bring it right back down and at this point I'm still waiting on uh, the rebuild kit to come in so I can't do much other than prep. What I've been doing is uh, taking off all the old RTV off. Uh, let me pan out the camera here where I've been working on. 
taking out all this RTV off. It, it takes a while. Also from the oil pan. Just work on that all the way through. Everywhere where there's a RTV sealant, uh, I went ahead and uh, took it off. Uh, this doesn't belong here right now. All right, so at that point, uh, another thing is I already removed the four pistons from the rods. Dealing with tight spaces here, I'm running low on them. My cam dip, so I have to put half of the connected connecting rods in there. I will let it uh, sit there. Look uh, how nicely it's already cleaning it up from that half, and uh, then I have to flip it and then uh, degrease it, and they should come out pretty nicely. So I can measure the upper portion and the lower and then uh, we're going to uh, uh, balance these and uh, I'll show you my home way, homemade way on how to get these balanced. There was no issues prior but since we're doing the rebuild we're going to cover that too. Okay on this step we're going to install the four oil jets. I have installed the oil jets. I have to make a very uh, important note. I had put three out of the four incorrect. How? Well, by just putting it on and then putting the bolt, it uh, seemed to have, let me have this focus so I can talk. Okay, I had, I had torqued the nut or the bolt, but the squirter itself um, the divot, the dowel uh, pin was cockeyed, so it seemed like I tightened it, and it seemed good. But uh, as I looked for it, it was cockeyed and it was not sealed. So in the event that I had not paid that attention, the oil would have been coming out to the side and uh, not pushing up in here, causing a failure. So you want to make sure these are seated in correctly. Seated in. Seat it in and seat it in. All right, at this point, I cannot do much else other than wait on the rebuild kit. So I'm going to put a uh, preservative around here, although it's aluminum, but uh, I still like to do that. So I'll put some preservative until the rebuild kit shows up and I will continue showing the uh, reinstallation of everything. Now, when I would like to make note, one more note is nowhere in the manual shows a torque for that. So I put uh, Loctite on threads, blue Loctite, and I and I tightened it as uh, as tight as I felt when it came off. So you you should get a good feel on what uh, the tightness is for that size bolt. But for everything else from here on out, I'm going to mention the torque and the the steps of torquing or uh, whatever the book calls for, I will mention it. Um, it's just that that, for some reason, is not on any uh, section of the FSM. All right, so I have everything cleaned up for the most part. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, balance these uh, connecting rods and right here I have already weighed them but I'm just going to show you how I did it I have okay they shut off on me let's turn it on they all came about 481 grams and I took various measurements different sides up and around get an average so pits number one is 481, piston number two is 482, number three 480, and number four is 481. So the biggest difference is right here, uh, but two grams is still within limits, so there's no need for any action. But because I'm out here and I like to do a little bit of extra work, uh, and this one being the lightest, I'm gonna go ahead and bring all these down to 480. But now, before I do that, I have to determine on what side that extra gram or two is going to be at. Again, 
that gram is negligible so no action really needed but what I'm going to do is I fix the jig here a two everything from a jack uh, jack tools right here and I put a 30 pound weight just to hold it it's fixed and I would go ahead and measure the small end at a 45 degree angle uh, inclination and then flip it around and get the weights off the big end as well and then after I do that then I'm going to come to the conclusion on uh, what side am I going to take that gram off so that way it's not just balanced within static weight it's also balanced within uh, the far ends of the rotating uh, uh, path so just a, a recap on what's been going on so far it's still waiting on parts to come in but in the meanwhile uh, as you can see I've been cleaning everything everything looks uh, pretty clean there is no oil anymore same thing with the connecting rods <clears throat> this will go back here so now that after I grind those grams off I'm gonna go ahead and write down the weight uh, just uh, to take a picture later for reference purposes as well all right now they all have been uh, ground down I just cut up here at the far end just grinded enough on uh, this one wasn't touched because like I said this one was the lightest one so this one didn't need any grinding at all because we just have we just wanted to match all these so now they were all heavy on the an extra gram on the uh, far end and now they're all 480 <clears throat> sometimes uh, people like to install the bolts torque them in because this may be a different weight as well a manufacturing process so that uh, is gonna throw off your numbers not throw it off but give you different numbers but uh, I decided to do it like this and just again because the whole thing is still negligible uh, uh, no no grinding is required but I went ahead and just did the connecting rods so that way the actual rotating pieces are at least balanced uh, my argument is on this one because it's so close to the point of rotation it's uh, not going to make any difference uh, on this and however it would make a lot more difference and then same thing once I get the pistons in they uh, should be within the tolerance from the factory but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, static balance them as well and uh, when they get here we'll uh, talk about that all right we have all the parts in so what I'm going to do is start uh, measuring the clearance the oil clearance for the bearings now you order your standard size bearings and you have to install them and then measure them and if they're good then those are the ones that you would use if the gap is too big or too small then you would have to either get the crank ground down and use oversized bearings but uh, it's a kind of a expense uh, just to find out because you have to buy a set of bearings just to be able to get a measuring point you cannot just uh, find out the measurement beforehand so you need a new set of bearings and the ones that we are using is going to be the standard size and uh, let's uh, go over that I already have all the parts on hand to rebuild the entire engine so now we're just gonna continue uh, working and uh, explain every step of the process first thing that I want to do is ensure that all the threads of where the bolts are going to uh, be inserted in clean and as you can see they all have already been uh, tap and dyed and degreased they're all com perfectly completely clean no debris in them at all so that's uh oops that's what you want to see uh, for your mains the bearings are going to be installed completely dry there's no oil no assembly lube anything needed for the measurement <clears throat> once we determine the gap then we're going to go ahead and uh, show the final installation procedure of the crank but for now we're just going to uh, get the measurements 
So do not use this step as the installation process. This step is just to identify the gap and be able to record that, to also understand and come to a determination on what type of oil or thickness we're going to use according to the numbers that are going to be present upon the plastic gauge uh, gap inspection. All right, I would like to make note of the main bearings. There are two differences. One is completely solid, and then the other one has an oil passage with oil galleys in ins and outs. So these are the ones that are gonna go onto the block, and then these are the ones that are gonna mate onto the main caps. For example, psh, take this over here, and then you can see a, uh, an oil, oil guide, and then you can see the holes of where the bearings uh, would feed the oil in. <clears throat> so now, also you wanna look at your notch. Your notch will match over here. So in this case, I would flip it. And you line the guide, or the notch, and you simply press in. See on this side, it's still sticking out a little bit. Push it down. You wanna make sure that they're flat on both edges. Completely seated. You can see the hole, if I can get it to focus here. Okay, you can see the hole right there where the oil will push up. So this one is good, good to go. Completely dry, no oil for now. And I'm going to repeat the process on all of them. All right, I have put the bearings, half of the bearings, and now I had put the crank in. I just laid it down, do not rotate it. You want to avoid rotating your crank because that would be bare metal on metal contact. So you will start grooving things and etching it. So let's uh, minimize that by not rotating the crank. So now the crank has been laid. It's pretty heavy, so it aids in sitting the bearings. Let's just take a look all the way around. So if you're working on this, you can get to see what right looks like, at least to some degree. Okay, everything checks out. So now, I'm going to grab my strip of plastic dip and lay it down. And I only have so many hands, so I'm going to have to do these in a step where I can uh, do it and show you. So the next step is going to be me cutting the plastic dip and laying down the strips right here. As soon as I do that, I will show you in the clip. All right, right here we have for this engine, standard oil clearance is 0 0.017 to 0 0.040 millimeters or seven thousandths to 16 thousandths of an inch. And maximum oil clearance, 0 0.050 millimeters or 200, I can't read that, 0 0.002 of an inch. All right, now move over here. I have installed the plastic gauge all across. Just have to line that up a little bit better. This one is just a little curved, no problem. And there, now we have plastic gauge on all the mains. And I have to assemble now the rod, uh, the mains. They all already lined up. Uh, one two, three, four, and five. I'm going to put the bearings, these ones, install them, and then I'm gonna show you the next step. All right, here I have installed all the bearings on the main caps. You can see how the notches are lined up and everything is nice and even. And now we're going to go ahead and install these. This one says number five, so it's gonna go all the way in the back. Arrow pointing forward. I'm going to install these all the way around. This one right here is missing a dowel pin, but the dowel pin is right on the number one right here. So make sure you have all your dowel pins. None of these other main caps uh, have their dowel pins on them, but that's because they are all here 
on the block. That one just happened to uh, have more tension on the main cap itself, but that's not a problem. All right. Before I install the main caps, I actually have a cap right here, main cap of my oil. And I'm going to grab some oil, just like this, and that's it. Just put a few dabs on the threads. Do that on all your main cap bolts, and then carefully install your main caps. So on the next clip, you're going to see all the main caps installed, and then we're going to go over the tightening and torquing process. All right, all the main bolts are hand threaded, so they are engaged. And now I'm going to use my 14 millimeter and ratchet and start driving them down. Still not tightening, I'm just driving it down until I feel just a little bit of resistance. And the sequence goes from out towards in. So you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or one, two, three, four, whatever you'd want to do, but from out, out, in, in, completely centered. And if you haven't noticed, I have not installed the thrust washers yet because I'm taking this on and off. So that will be uh, mentioned uh, when we get to it. All right, so now I'm going to drive these down and then we're going to torque these. All right, let's uh, show you here for the torque sequence. Uh, it is 30 foot pounds, and you can see the sequence right there. It starts from out in. All right, and then it also says after you torque it to 30 foot pounds, you are going to do a 90 degree turn. These are torque to yield, yield bolt, torque to yield bolt bolts they will stretch a little that's why you also have to measure the length and girth of the bolts to make sure they're still serviceable these checked out good so now at this point uh, instead of doing doing a paint mark I'm going to use my degree wheel I also have my torque wrench here this torque wrench however measures in foot or inch pounds and I had converted it to read into inch pounds and it's the same as 360 inch pounds and I have already set it at that so now once I torque it all to 30 foot pounds I'm going to use this device which is going to fit in to a point fit in I would find a good locking spot right here and then once I continue to follow it will go from 0 to 90. This is obviously adjustable I haven't adjusted it yet but whenever you find that locking point right here so the wheel doesn't turn you would turn the face or target of it to where it would fall into zero so that way when you continue on you would reach your 90 degree so that way you do your first pass of 30 foot-pounds and then your 90 degree all the way around. So I can't show you that unfortunately because I only have two hands and one of them is holding the camera right now. So you only see uh, post work. But these are the steps as best explained before I actually do them. Here's my effort to show you the very last one, just torque verification. It is set at 360 degrees or 360 inch pounds of torque it's lined up and click all right that's basically how you would uh, torque them all the way around and now at this point it is the 90 degree torque to yield uh, procedure okay at this point I have locked in the, the L bracket to stop with the crank I have lined up the target at zero degrees and now once uh, it goes up to 90 degrees, it doesn't matter if it goes to the left or to the right, you'll know that's 90 degrees. It's a quarter turn, basically. 180 degrees is half a turn. Uh, so as long as you're at least that smart, you can understand that either way it goes, you will be uh, meeting 
your intent. So now no, no torque wrench is needed because now you're just doing the degree turn. Had I used a torque wrench, it would just click and it would uh, be no point of it clicking because it's not reading. I'm trying to do this on camera with one hand. So I have to apologize if it gets a little jumpy. Okay, I have it again lined up and here I go. One handed, hopefully it doesn't slip off. to put my hand here so I apologize because I really don't want it to slip off. Okay, that's 90 degrees right there and that bolt has been uh, torqued to 30 foot-pounds and also 90 degrees. So I'm now going to follow this procedure, same torquing sequence all the way around and then remove it and read the plastic gauge uh, measurement. All right, that was uh, pretty uh, uh, workful because I'm by myself and I have to hold the cart in place while trying to torque it at uh, torque to yield 90 degrees. So it was uh, pretty intense. Anyways, they are all done. <clears throat> Let's see if I can take a actual zoom in focus on that. You might see the little green spot right where the flash is pointing at, just that green right there. That's the plastic dip that was sticking out barely. All right, so now all I have to do is remove it. And some of the plastic gauge made out of, may have shifted to the bearing cap and some just stayed squished onto the crank. Regardless, we're going to be able to get a good reading and I will remove these off camera as well and then show you the measurements. All right, I took off the number one main cap. I've already loosened them all off. They're ready to get popped off, but we're just going to go on camera and measure one of them just to give you an idea on what to do on yours because me showing you every one is just... Uh, for the purpose of how to do it, it's all redundant, it's the same. So all right, let's see if we can get this on camera. That is, let's focus on it. All right, that is your plastic gauge all squished up. Now let's use the millimeter uh, reading. And I'm going to match it up with the closest I can get. One second here, one-handed. All right, if we, uh, if we look at that, that looks pretty damn accurate right there. Just about by the book. So that is 0 0.038 of millimeter. Right there. So uh, for you American guys, <clears throat> let's use the old standard uh, inch. And let's match that up with point. Oops, sorry, off camera. Right there. That is point zero zero one five of an inch. Let's go back here and we have standard oil clearance point zero one seven to point zero four zero millimeter and we had close to point zero three eight. And because this this uh, is eyeballing it, we already see that it did not exceed it. Whoop, touch screen. We did not exceed it, so we're definitely within the standard range. So we are good to go using standard. I am at least. I don't know about you. All right, so off camera again, I'm gonna remove these, measure them all uh, individually so I can record it so the client has the reference of uh, the procedures and the numbers. And if, after that, meticulously remove all the plastic gauge and then I will talk about how to uh, my battery's dying and my flash just turned off after this I will take off the crank recharge my battery and then uh, go ahead with the installation of the thrust washers and everything else at this point I have installed the thrust washers on both ends these are floating thrust washers. Make sure you have the bevel ends facing out on both sides. 
I went ahead and lubricated all the main bearings all the way around. Also, at this point, we're just going to install the crankshaft and follow the same procedures on torquing and installation as we did for the plastic gauge uh, procedure. All right, here I have the cranked installed. Let's take a view up top. Oil jet, oil jet, oil jet, and oil jet. <clears throat> All right, so what I'm going to work on now is getting the gaps for the piston rings. We're going to start off with uh, the number one or the top ring. All right, here I have the three bags. This one says first ring. This one says second ring. And this one says oil ring, which is the third set. <clears throat> All right, by the book, you have to push the piston ring a certain length and then uh, get the measurement from there or the gap measurement and it may be on point to where it doesn't need cut or it may be it may need some cutting this block did get rehoned so it may be that uh, much bigger so we would have to uh, take into account that that may affect the gap here so Although these rings are for factory setting, we're going to ensure by measuring with a filler gauge the gap at the location. All right, at this moment I have installed the number one piston rings on all cylinder bores to the appropriate length. I want you to take note of the gap or the gaps on each of them. Okay. Now, at this point forward, every oil ring is going to be designated to that piston, meaning once you get your measurement, you're not going to put those in here or flip those in anywhere else. They're designated for that uh, piston and cylinder only. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm going to grab my feeler gauge and we're going to measure these. We come here to the book. I have your number one ring is 0.22 to 0.32 millimeters. Uh, we have here 0.20203, ranging all the way to 0.30. So I have my minimum and, and maximum. Uh, this uh, 0 0.20, it's a little past the minimum right here, but this would be the closest one although it is exceeding by nine hundredths of an inch or millimeter. Uh, so I'm just going to get an eye here on, on if it's too loose here or too tight here, what have you. So I know that my maximum yeah. is right here, 0.59, which is uh, about these, more than these two to combine. So we're just gonna head over here I'm going to put my minimum first. See here, no effort. My minimum fits. Minimum fits. Minimum fits. And my minimum fits. <clears throat> the one I measured or used was my 0 0.203. Now, the minimum requirement is 0.22. I cannot make that any tighter, of course. So that means this one went in without any effort. So just to uh, make everybody feel comfortable, we're going to actually use a feeler gauge that that is within the green of the numbers, which is a uh, 0.229. Head back over here. Put it in. Perfect. Put it in. Perfect. Perfect and perfect. Now I want to make sure that the gap is not too big and what I'm going to do is just use my maximum right here which is my 0.32. I just close this and I have only one hand so I'm going to have to do this off camera, put it right back out and 
uh, remeasure. <clears throat> Alright, I pulled out the closest one, which is the 0 0.33. See if we can get that to uh, read. Right, kind of right there, you can see it. 0 0.330. Alright, so that is one tenth of a millimeter too much, but we know that the maximum is 0.89. So that's a long ways to go, but if you can see right here, it it goes in with uh, resistance. Make sure it's level. Goes in with some resistance. Okay. And there you go. All right, so the way it's really looking at right now is because of the honing, it did open it up a little bit more, allowing that extra tenth of a millimeter to go to go in. But uh, it's still still good because it's nowhere close to that 0 0.89, which is obviously the maximum, anyways. But uh, we're going to call this good and uh, move forward. So at this point, I'm going to install the piston rings and actually I'll go over that. All right, at this point I'm going to assemble the pistons. Don't go off of the dot, that does not mean, if, you, if your piston has a dot, do not go off of it. You may go off of this notch that is pointing forward. Another thing to look at is the, the two dots that is pointed forward as well. All right, those are the two things that you wanna look at to make sure that these pistons are facing forward. This time I'm going to install the connecting rod along with the pin. If it doesn't slide in, you have to heat up the piston no more than uh, 200 degrees and then slide in your pin. But to ensure that your pin does not pass to where it's supposed to, on the back side you're going to go ahead and install that circlip on all of them. On all the back ends you install the circlip so that way whenever it's time to push that pin through it's going to stop at that circlip and then you can install the following circlip. And now, just one last uh, uh, recap. I'm going to do piston number one, and only number one because the rest are redundant. Follow this notch. This notch right here is going to ensure that it's also facing forward. Do not install it 180 out. This is what the back side looks like. This is how it's supposed to be installed right here notch facing forward <clears throat> the two caps don't have to worry about it they're dummy proof they have pins only on one side so you can only install it correctly and you cannot install it incorrectly all right so at that point you're going to see all four installed and i'm going to install the rings and then we're going to talk about how to set up the rings properly okay here is piston number one assembled you have the circlip installed on both ends there you go I use a little bit of lube to help me slide it in facing forward notch forward this one is good to go this one the rings are ready to be installed now let's talk about the rings right here You have to uh, align the mark, which is right here. And then, number one uh, compression ring uh, cut is going to be 45 degrees angle there. And then number, whoa. Number two is going to be completely opposite. And then... Uh, opposite from your your oil rings both pieces all right all right sorry I don't have a fancy uh, stainless steel solid uh, bench to put all this stuff in to look awesome but it's the best I can do right now with the uh, budget and space <clears throat> But nonetheless, it is coming out to be everything to spec and everything done right. No shortcuts here.
And when I say budget, I don't mean going cheap. I just mean uh, doing everything right, but uh, with minimal tools, not uh, sacrificing technique or uh, maintenance procedures. <clears throat> Anyways, right here we have all the pistons installed. I did not have to heat the pistons because they uh, slid in almost too perfect. Uh, no play whatsoever. Everything came out in spec. Everything was previously measured. And let me show you here. Notch, notch, and the notch for the bottom. And they all have the dots. So all these right now are pointing upwards. It is imperative that you ensure that the C-clip is properly seated in the C-clip or circlip groove. It may show a false uh, lock, uh, so make sure that they are seated in. Make sure that they are seated in all the way through on both sides. And at that point, we are ready to install the piston rings. I'm going to install the piston rings and then show you how they go and we're going to go ahead and install them. Okay, here I'm about to, I just opened the bag for the oil rings. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is first, first put in these. Now, sadly, the book does not tell me how to install these on what direction. If you pay attention, both ends, uh, let's just call them uh, horns. You can either put both horns going up or both horns going down. Luckily, I've built many engines before and all of them go with horns going up. So we are going to do horns going up. I'm just going to take that assumption. When in actuality all I have to go is uh, to the old ones. I've read some YouTubers mind. Let's do that real quick. <clears throat> I'm not going to edit this because I just want you guys to see what I would go through. And uh, I'm going to have to pull this out with two hands. I can't do it with one. Uh, this just seems to be a different version, so I'm going to have to uh, take a closer look. Cannot just see it from uh, the naked eye. So give me one second. All right, these are different in design. These have a ring or a pin that drives through the ring and then uh, secures itself. So I cannot use it as a reference. So the aftermarket ones do go horns up just because I know how that's they all have been going. And even Wiseco, JE Pistons, they all go with uh, horns up. Unless I'm just quoting myself completely erroneous and then uh, we're just gonna have to see. So before I do that, I'm going to check online and uh, verify before I proceed. All right, verification complete. The horns do go facing up. Let's see if I can focus here one more time. They go up like that and that. Okay, so I'm going to install my O-ring on all four of them and then proceed to the second ring and then to the top ring. And then at that point I would be ready for the next step and I'll record that. Be extremely careful when putting these in. You wanna put one edge on and slowly push it in as you go uh, because you may crack these. They won't, they can bend, but they're going to immediately crack. So, you gotta be cautious about that, don't give it too much stress. All the oil rings have been installed. Alright, now to the number two rings. Number two ring is in. Alright, now top ring. Alright, top, top ring is also installed. Everything's opposing as per the manual. Now I'm going to uh, perform an old school method which is to dip 
the whole piston in oil so all the galleys are filled with oil that helps with uh, making a good seal for those first stages of compression while the engine is dry uh, running for the first time and uh, it does uh, take a little longer for braking but the whole point of the engine is to run so it'll have enough time to, to break in one thing I would like to note is that I did not show the the measuring of the gap for the connecting rods is because it's a redundant method and I didn't uh, feel like wasting everybody's time uh, because it's the same procedure don't worry about it if you didn't see it it's the same thing <clears throat> all you have to follow is the manual for the torques and you uh, should get the proper torques that way now what I'm going to do is install the bearings again on the connecting rods not on the connecting rod caps because I will do that uh, after the piston has been pushed in all the way so I'm going to use a piston ring compressor and slide in the piston if you want to know how to do that find another video because right now I'm running I would make this video way too long uh, showing you how to use the tools to perform this task this video is mainly intended for you to get to see the installation procedures and rebuild procedures for this, not a how-to on every single item on how to use. All right, I have installed piston number one and piston number four. That's because it's in the same line of rotation. That way I can uh, knock out two birds with one stone. These are right now in the compression and these are in the uh, stroke. All right, so now I have torqued four of the bolts right now, these, at 18 foot-pounds, and now the following procedure is also at 90 degrees. So now I have my breaker bar in my hand, and I'm going to do the 90 degrees on these two, and then off-camera, I'm going to uh, also install piston number two and three, and follow the same procedures. Once these... Uh, the lobes of the crank come up, go ahead and uh, put some assembly fluid on your <coughs> connecting rod bearings and go ahead and uh, torque them and do the 90 degrees. And uh, following that, we'll rotate the engine and I'll show it to you and then we can uh, probably wrap it up for me for today. All right, we have all four pistons in just cleaned up the oil from the one and four I just haven't reached on to the two and three but that's just uh, the overflow of oil that I used to make sure that the rings are that have oil in them to help with compression and uh, so they run, don't run too dry just technique of my preference some people run them dry some people do whatever they do I'm just telling you what I did you can uh, follow your preference or your best educated guess. <clears throat> Here are the bearings completely installed. Your mains. Here's an under picture or video of everything installed. Everything's ready to rock and roll. You can see the connecting halves. That letter R, letter V, W and P. You can see on the bottom of the cap the notch facing forward, <clears throat> notch facing forward, notch facing forward, and notch facing forward. Right back up here, notches facing forward, 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 and forward. Everything so far is checked out perfect. <clears throat> no issues on this build as of yet shouldn't encounter anything this engine was completely operable didn't have any issues other than that cracked piston and we have already resolved that issue as you can see so everything else should be straightforward easy installed no issues and next we are going to install the head at this time i'm going to clean the surface area 
uh, make sure it's uh, completely free of oil. I'm gonna hit it with some brake clean on a shop rag. I'm not gonna spray it directly. So you want to spray your shop rag or shop towel with brake clean and pat it. Do not scrub it because uh, pieces will go inside into different areas. But you want to pat it, absorb all the oil and everything, keep it on the bare metal everywhere as much as uh, you can. Now I went ahead and found the exact top dead center and keep the piston number one all the way up. I'm also going to make a paint marker uh, uh, med, uh, marking to ensure that it is true top dead center. So that way uh, not only is the dowel uh, or the pins right here facing up, I'm also going to make sure it is in the com exactly up because if I rotate it, it can ever so slightly go up and down and still be um, what most would consider top dead center. But I want on the exact uh, dead center, very top end. You can only get that uh, by visualizing uh, the piston itself. So I have here the Felpro Permatorque Multi-Layer Steel Head Gasket. This is uh, an improved version from the, their previous version. This one has a blue coating on it which helps seal even better for coolant. And it is, uh, never had any issues with these so I'm gonna continue running them and I really love them so I'm gonna use them. And at that point I'm going to just once again uh, lay, lay the shop towel, clean it up on both the head and the the block clean it up put the head gasket on and put the head on and then we're going to talk about the torque sequence all right i have the deck of the block cleaned and dried now i'm going to go ahead and put this uh coolant spacer or whatever you want to call it make sure you drop that in there and that's it now it's ready for the head gasket and the head. All right, you can see the installation steps. Same as the as a block, it goes from the inside out. And it, you can look at the the steps. It is first you coat the threads of the of the head bolts with engine oil, and then you torque them to 58 foot pounds. And then after that you do the 90 degree pass. I'm not going to show you that step because it's the same as the main caps and the rod ends. So no point in showing you the same uh, redundant method. So now that you know how to, how to do it on the last video, you can uh, follow the same method uh, for the head. So at this point we can look at the head. I have dropped it in place with the two dowel pins in. One is on this side and the other is on this side. After that, we are good to go to install the head bolts, which I'm going to slowly hand tighten them uh, so the head gets seated before we start torquing it. <clears throat> and you can see a hole right there. Okay, all right. Here I am one hand in it. It is set at 695 inch pounds. Let's keep going. There it is. That's a click. It's torqued. All right. I will continue on the sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten. And then after that the 90 degree angle. It all has been torqued at 58 foot pounds but what I'm going to do is do another pass of 58 foot pounds. Reason is the head gasket is a multi-layer steel and it just got compressed so it might change the value on some of the bolts as they got torqued so it is always a good measure to do another pass in the same sequence just to make sure that they are all seated still at 54 I'm sorry, at 58 foot-pounds of torque. 
or 696 inch pounds of torque. <clears throat> and then at that point, once I do the second pass, I'm gonna go ahead and do the 90 degree torque to yield. This is gonna be interesting because I'm gonna do it one handed. Hopefully it doesn't jump off. I would uh, like to just put it on video at least. So here we go. It is uh, 90, so I'm going for 180. There it is, 180. All right, that's uh, bolt number three, and I'm continue on. It has been completely torqued, 58 foot pounds and 90 degree angle to all the head bolts. It is a 10, 10 point square uh, bit that you're gonna need. So if you don't have that, go ahead and get it. That's what it looks like right there. All right, so now we go off. We're going to go ahead and uh, proceed forward with the installation of the camshafts. Before we do so, there is a bearing that goes here. Just on this side. Good job Toyota, not doing it on this side. So we're going to get that bearing. At this time I have put the uh, camshaft bearing, the lower piece. It is a three angle bearing doesn't matter which way it goes, it only goes in, uh, well it'll go in either way, either way is fine. Uh, pay attention to the upper piece, also you have to replace that. And uh, let's go back to the old one. Still haven't removed it. There you go, you can see the oil galleys, how it has to be set up. And it has a notch on it so you cannot mess it up. You look at the new one, it also has a notch, so just follow the notch. Now, you want to use assembly grease everywhere where there's going to be metal to metal contact. Before you put the camshafts on, we have to put the valve spring cups or our rockers. They're not rockers, they're, they're more of a cup, so I'll call them cups. Now, uh, it's gonna take a while during the first startup, although I will prime the engine before startup, it will take a while for oil pressure to come all the way up here and lubricate all these parts. So it is integral that you put as much assembly uh, fluid or lubricant as you can or grease, whatever you have, uh, hopefully grease, so it'll stay in place and uh, be sufficient lubrication until the oil can uh, wash it away and take its place. All right, so at this point I have lubricated everything and I'm going to put the valve spring caps. The camshaft, uh, I'm sorry, the valve spring caps have all been installed. You can see how I sparingly put more grease, assembly grease, and that's where the rockers are gonna be hitting over and over and over and over and they rotate twice as fast as the crank so if your car starts and idles at 700 that is going at 1400 rpm right there before the oil can get to it so make sure you have enough in there as you can see everything has been lubricated and we're ready to install the camshafts I have installed the camshafts the camshaft, uh, I'm sorry, the valve spring caps underneath, the camshaft caps, and uh, for your own reference, if you uh, forgot to identify these, I'm going to go over these. Intake number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. You see how they all have the arrows pointing forward. Make sure you put those in relation to the front of the engine. Now we're moving on to the exhaust side. You have Echo 5, E5, right there. If it focuses, there you go. <coughs> Buzz, excuse me. Four, three, two, and these numbers don't match, but what you want to use a reference for these two 
is this one has the bearings that you install and they go on your variable vibe, valve timing gear sprocket and this one doesn't have anything so use that as your reference now still haven't uh, torqued these down but this is one of the items that you want to see to line up for the timing chain then we come down here and you can see it has a notch this one's pointing towards the intake and this one's pointing towards the exhaust all right we will go more into detail for timing everything once we get to that point now very crucial that you have to follow is before you go ahead and follow the torque sequence for these understand that the lobes are in different angles and they're pushing against the valve so if you just go ahead and start torquing one at a time all the way down you're causing a lot of stress on that one camshaft cap and all these are made out of is cast aluminum they're not very strong so if you go ahead and torque that down you're going to cause so much stress that once you go to the next one you might bend it and crack it so what you want to do is slowly drive them in slowly once you feel too much resistance or a little bit of resistance go to the next one and then go to the next one until it slowly sinks in and then you see all the camshaft caps uh, driven down to the base once that is done then you are safe to torque it but do not torque it before do not tighten them all the way down beforehand make sure you drive them down evenly same thing goes for both sides so we are going to follow the torque sequence in the book Alright, I have seated all the camshaft caps as shown and at this point we're going to go ahead and do the torque sequence. Same thing from the inside out and I have my torque wrench set at 80 inch pounds for all the 10 millimeter bolts and then it is 22 foot pounds for the 12 millimeter bolts. Alright, everything's been torque striped and identified uh, for correctness. Also I cleaned with brake cleaner the mating surface for the block strengthening plate for the lower portion for the oil pan. That is what is going to happen next. This is going to be RTV all the way through on both ends and then we're going to put the case in. All right, at this point, we are ready to put in this piece, the block strengthener plate. And we are clean on the mating surface on both ends, and also clean on these pieces right here, or this area. Take note that you I have to go get it, but an O-ring goes right here. So install your o-ring and then everywhere else your adhesive and then go ahead and install your lower piece. All right. The stiffening plate has been installed. All of the bolts are 24 foot-pounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, ensure you have your countershaft bearings installed. Go ahead and lubricate those, as well as find your gasket for your oil pump. And we're going to install the oil filter housing thread mount. Make sure you tighten that one in there because that is uh, hidden in there. Let me just go ahead and uh, grab it. I have it right here. See right here it is a, a Allen key. Go ahead and thread it in and torque it. And I will give you the torque spec here in a second once I get to the book. You want to ensure that you have a good uh, bead of RTV. I kind of over, overshot it in that corner, but no big deal. Still all good. There's a good bead of RTV everywhere. You want to make sure there's a good seal. Let's hit this area so you can see. 
Now here I want you to take note, although it did spread it out on both ends, once it dries I'm going to cut both edges to make sure that the seal goes in without any uh, foreign, foreign matter in it. This piece right here is just a half triangle that goes out so you're not going to see any RTV here because the bead actually crosses this way and doesn't go extend out. And you have a clean bead all the way through. All right. All right, I have laid down the counter shaft, uh, the counter balance shafts. You see I had put uh, the assembly grease. Now, this is what I want you to pay attention to to make sure they're aligned. The two actual drilled holes have to be pointing down along with the wood rough key on the crank. Everything has to be pointing down or up if you want to be uh, in relation to the engine. Everything's pointing up in relation to the engine or down to the ground if you have the engine upside down. You're going to see two other lines and then two uh, machine circles. Those also have to line up with the uh, lower block piece. And then all you have to do is drop the housing. If I can get it to Okay, that would be my first mistake. Make sure you put it in the right way. One-handed. Kind of hard with all the bolts in place. All right, here you have the counter shaft, uh, counter balance shafts with the dots pointing down, the two machine dots facing each other. The torque for this is 16 foot pounds plus 90 degree torque. And the order is one, two, three, four. Same thing here, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> After that, you are good to go to install the oil pump. I had already put the gasket and it's going to be three bolts for the oil pump. All right, the new oil pump is in and I had to carry forward the oil pump uh, spur gear uh, nut because the new one was not provided with it, but that's not a problem. The three bolts for the oil pump is 14 foot pounds no 90 degree turn or anything like that just 14 foot pounds and that is it so now just have to clean up some of the old oil that got all around because i just don't want it to drip any more than what has been and we are going to continue the assembly at this point i'm going to flip the engine and align the uh, camshafts with our corresponding uh, marks to continue the installation of the timing chain. <clears throat> All right, on the key, once you line it up in here, the dot, you're gonna line it up with a yellow mark, and then you do the same thing with uh, the oil pump gear, the dot with the mark, and the gear itself has one flat so the key can only align in one way otherwise you can spin it until you find that one flat on the circle and it'll drive in and then you tighten this to 14 foot pounds and when you do that make sure that your little key is in there and then your tensioner is applying the proper amount of tension and now we are good to install the timing chain we're going to install the guides along with the chain and the chain uh, uh, guide right here for the actual timing chain. All right, let's talk about the timing marks more in detail. We have this line on the intake camshaft that should align with that arrow that you see right there. On your exhaust camshaft, you have the square mark. This can be a little confusing because you have the exhaust a mark, a dot this way, 
we have something that says the eye that would represent intake and a dot. It's mainly just pointing that way so you understand the relation. And then you just have a simple mark. This is the rectangle mark that you want to use. And line it up right there with that arrow right there. It's an itty bitty arrow. Cannot pick it up on camera to save my life. There you go. That arrow right there with that dot. And we will confirm it by printing on the chain. We have already uh, installed the guides on both sides. Let me, uh, okay, there you go. The guides on both sides all the way through. Two bolts here, one pivot bolt here. And now we are good to go to install the, the sprocket along with the chain. All right, uh, right here I have installed the timing chain, the guides. Don't worry about that, I will explain it here in a second. And this other follower guide piece as well. All of this is 14 foot pounds. Now, the reason why it looks funny is because the hydraulic tensioner is not installed, but see that? It does look kind of scary. Don't worry. This uh, I've worked on this one before, and it's uh, uh, it's not going to be of an issue. It doesn't matter how many times you do that, so it's going to fall into the right place. And this piece does not let it fall uh, to allow it to jump a tooth. Right here we have everything aligned. I already moved the chain around to make sure everything is in time and there's no interference. Make sure that the F stands for forward and it only goes in with uh, only one way. And you can see right here on um, this slack doesn't really mean a whole lot because once the hydraulic tensioner is installed, you can see how it'll pick it up. So as I was doing the verification uh, rotation, I had my hand right here, keeping it tight. While I was turning the crank, I actually put the crank bolt and I turned it uh, while I was holding this and everything came out just fine. Everything's rotating just right, no interference. So I'm good to install the timing chain case cover right after I put this on. Right there with the wood rough key facing forward. That's it. Here's a one more pass just so you can see everything installed. And I'm ready to apply the sealant. Already cleaned it off with brake clean. Apply the sealant all through. And <clears throat> right here, I'm going to replace the seal and go ahead and uh, reinstall this. The timing chain cover has been installed all the way around. It has a sealant, it has a new seal right there. And now you have to install your timing chain tensioner. There's a hook right here that you have to push down on the piston while unlocking the lever so it doesn't catch on the teeth and then put your lock on the piston so it holds it in place and you go ahead and insert it line it up and torque it. And then at that point you have to rotate the crank counterclockwise to apply pressure to the tensioner to unhook it from the hook and it'll shoot back and give the tension required for the chain. Alright, the torque wrench is set up. It is a HEX 12 for the oil filter housing. It is 22 foot-pounds. So all you gotta do is click it. Click complete. Torque complete. There's that inner bolt. All right, I had, uh, here's another pass of the chain case cover. That's your new uh, seal, oil seal right there. Now we're back up on top, but we're gonna close 
this bottom end I'm going to one more time clean this mating surface up with brake clean apply another bead of sealant and put down the oil pan the oil pan has been installed sealant has been applied all the way around and the torque is 80 inch pounds all the way around for the nuts and for the bolts 80 inch pounds all right that makes up for just about everything on the long block <clears throat> all I have to do is uh, let it cure and we're going to proceed with the installation of the water pump and uh, what should we do next uh, water pump spark plugs and valve cover and the old spark plugs are off and the new spark plugs are in and they already have a dab of anti-seize on them and we're going to go ahead and put those on and torque them and then after that I'm going to put the new valve cover gasket onto the valve cover and install the valve cover so next clip you're going to see all this covered up all right the engine is completely put together well for the most part here's a quick pan I had uh, spray painted it make it look clean Right. Another day for me, but a uh, continuation for you. Everything is put together for the most part. Now we're going to go ahead and install the accessories. What I'm going to do now is install the water pump. The water pump is held by six bolts or a combination of four bolts and two nuts and uh, sealed by RTV so go ahead and clean the surface so both ends if you haven't done so completely dry with bright clean makes a good uh, clean and also remove any previous uh, RTV either on the block or if you're like me uh, customer I, I talked to the customer and I uh, told him the water pump is off to the side and it's uh, accessory build driven so there's no need to replace it on this kind of build because if it does uh, start showing problems it can be replaced at the time of it being a problem not like the oil pump the oil pump is integral internally to the timing chain and uh, it's a pain in the ass to get to so I said it would be a good idea to replace the water pump now and uh, that's why we did that so we're going to install this water pump Alright, the water pump is installed. Make note of the bracket. The bracket has to go in because that's what's going to keep it the crank sensor secured because it gets connected up here. Okay, here we have the water pump installed, which is two nuts and four bolts. I still have to uh, install the bracket. I just uh, installed the hardware now to let the seal uh, bond and then install the bracket. And 10 millimeter bolt to install the crank angle sensor. Make sure you lubricate the O-ring before you uh, push it in there. Use just engine oil. All right, next is going to be the crank pulley. All right, the crank pulley is in. The tensioner is in, along with the pulley. It is held by this 14 millimeter bolt, 14 millimeter nut on the stud. And if you remove the tensioner, it's just another 14 millimeter bolt right here. And then that concludes what I have done so far. Now I am in the back side of the engine more specifically on the head and I'm installing the cam shaft sensor camshaft angle sensor or the CAS 
go ahead and uh, install that. Make sure you also lubricate the O-ring, clean out the the bore or of where the sensor is going to be mounted and sit it through and go ahead and tighten that bolt. All right, now your VVTI or VVT solenoid, uh, same thing, lubricate the bore of the head, lubricate the O-ring, slide it in carefully, you might want to turn it in slowly as it goes in, and then go ahead and tighten your, your nut, or I'm sorry, your bolt. Now I'm going to move on over here, and I'm going to install my coolant uh, temperature sensor and then my oil pressure sensor, right here, or oil temperature sensor. Just so you guys don't miss on any of the progress I've been doing, I went over here and I installed all the sensors, these three uh, sensors, came around, I repositioned this because I look in the book and this is off to... Uh, off horizontally not vertically these are the brackets I installed the solenoid I installed pan out to what I have installed so far and ready to put in this water neck as soon as I do uh, another coat I'm just gonna go ahead and install it <clears throat> it's gonna go right here with the thermostat also I'm gonna do the feed line install that as well and uh, continue on. All right, at this point, we are going to install the rear main seal. I want to make a note of the protrusion of the RTV that stick out on both ends. You want to cut that with a blade and then lubricate the area and then put in your rear main seal. All right, right there you can see the rear main seal has been installed. See if I can get this to focus. Okay. You want to look around, make sure you have the same uh, depth of the gas, uh, the seal. Meaning, you want to look around, make sure it's in even, and there's not anything sticking out more than the other side. Okay. <clears throat> now we're ready to install the flywheel. If you have not cleaned the threads already from old uh, Loctite, go ahead and do so now. I went ahead and uh, cleaned it up the best I could with a wire wheel. <clears throat> so now you're going to only uh, put about two drops of Loctite onto the threads. That's it. Don't put any more. You don't have to overdo it. Two drops, two drops is good enough for these. The torque on these are 96 foot-pounds. So make sure you get your heavy duty torque wrench for that and torque them in star sequence. One, two, three, four, and same thing, one, two, three, four. All right. <clears throat> All right, everything has been torqued to 96 foot pounds and tape markered so that way uh, they all appear or they not appear but they are all marked as torqued so that way if they do move uh, you can have a visual indication of which one moved which they shouldn't because they've been properly torqued with the big torque wrench at 96 foot pounds all right uh, what I did because I'm by myself is I lowered the long block onto the ground and I put this screwdriver into this pocket right here found a good spot structural uh, point and I went ahead and torqued all the bolts in sequence and the flywheel did not move so that's how I did that now on to the <clears throat> clutch and pressure plate now I do not have the uh, clutch alignment tool but what we're going to do is cheat the system and use a socket that bit that will fit just enough or 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 snug into where the clutch alignment tool would go along with an extension to go in there so once i get that lined up uh and installed i'm going to show you another video and we're going to put together the transmission i have the 
flywheel and clutch and pressure plate all installed. You can see it is fairly lined up. What I used is your socket of choosing. Mine happened to be a 3 8 drive 19 millimeter. I have tried a 17 millimeter half inch drive socket but it was too loose and then the 18 millimeter half inch drive was too tight so a 3 8 drive ended up being perfectly snug no play barely whatsoever so it allowed me, allowed me to line it up and push around and get a good uh, visualization of it being pretty lined up so at that point I lubricated the, the spline there and also the splines here at the transmission I'm going to pick up the transmission and hook it up in here and I have these dowel pins around to help me guide it in and uh, at this point you're going to have to use a little bit of muscle because this alignment method may not be perfect and even if you use the clutch alignment tool it may give you a little bit of resistance so you're going to have to grab the whole transmission bell housing and everything and try to push it in but you'll feel it uh, sink in and then at that point we're going to talk about putting uh, all the bolts together so what i did is i lowered the engine enough to lay down a two by four to keep the long block fairly level ground and all i had to do was uh put the transmission facing it and it slid in no problems uh the method with the socket and then it up, ended up lining it up uh fairly straight because there was no resistance and the dowel pins are already lined up so instead of me struggling to close that gap I just have to close in the, the gap with the bolts and I am surprised out of all the other cars I have worked on this one does not have a starter plate but uh, I guess uh, there's no need one if the engineers designed it to where there is no need for one all right moving on all right the engine is balanced at least off of the the cherry picker but what I have done is tighten all the bolts for the transmission bell housing to mount it to the long block <clears throat> and reposition the strap to access the bolts from the bottom to go ahead and tighten those and right now the whole assembly is hanging off and what I'm going to do is lay it down one more time so I can finish installing the thermostat the water neck all the coolant pipes and everything else that I had removed once I had uh, brought the whole assembly in so that way I have nothing else on the bench and all I have to do is take it back to the vehicle to get laid in install the thermostat and the water neck just basically make sure this surface here is clean put your thermostat in the actual spring of the thermostat goes in and it'll look like that and then you put your your neck in there uh, and tighten uh, the two nuts right here here's the engine laid down as I said I was going to install the water neck uh, thermostat is in the spring is towards the inside two 10 millimeter bolts the pipe that goes to the heater core has been installed it is also uh, two 10 millimeter nuts along with one 10 millimeter bolt that has been secured as you can see the sensors have all been installed on this side I may have not mentioned this but I had installed the coil packs or the coils uh, 10 millimeter bolts all the way around uh, came across the baggie with this bracket so I went ahead and put it is one 10 millimeter bolt coming around like I had mentioned earlier, I realigned the knock sensor off horizontally. I installed these brackets right here. This is how they look. I still have these hanging. They are for the intake manifold. All right, now all I have to do is one more pass on cleaning the injectors, injector uh, holes, so that way uh, have a clean seal whenever I put them in but these have to be installed with the engine already in the car because I cannot install this or the intake manifold because even with the strap coming around I would create too much pressure on them and damage it 
So these are the components that have to get installed uh, after the engine goes in for that reason. All right, so at this point, I may have nothing else to show other than um, the engine running or right before the engine runs because all the steps from here on forth are going to be reverse order as you saw during the teardown. So that's it. Everything on the shelves have been cleared. Everything uh, has been installed. Now it's just a matter of doing the reverse order to put the engine in.